Hello everybody, Princess and Bear here. We're back at Old Key West Resort. We are going to Olivia's, the local yes. favorite. It's time to head back. Back to Bear's roots. Hopefully we can find a conference or something here. Be sure to Key West. You heard the girl. This is the Slappy Joe's Bourbon Berry Lemonade. Usually this would be what a bear would order, but I beat him to the punch. So this has bourbon in it. It has a blackberry brandy. And then it has lemonade and a splash of water. And that's why I wanted it, because I wanted something light and I didn't want something carbonated. This definitely delivers on both of those things. It is nice and light and not carbonated. A nice slow sipper. I'm actually going to keep this. I thought I might trade with Bear, but I don't think I'm going to now. I would give it four out of five whiskey barrels. I just can never steal any drink from me because I will drink all the things. Very little I won't drink. It's probably more telling than I mean it to be, but either way. I want to have a more tropical smoked turkey without the liquid smoke. And I don't necessarily have a problem with that. Hmm, four and a half out of five bottles. I'm gonna be a savage. Yeah, I did that. I'm probably gonna pay for it because there's 151 in this, so I'm probably gonna choke. Ooh. Actually, this is really good. This almost tastes like a Goombay smash. This is dangerous. I'm gonna give this five out of five cherries. I'm jealous now. I want this drink. Jokes on her, I don't like cherries anyway. It smells like the beach. Oh yes. Now this feels like the keys. This feels, but luckily does not smell like Duval Street. Also, four and a half out of five plus. Shout out to Chef Steven for bringing out the rolls and hooking up the uh, Earth Balance butter. Appreciate you, Chef Steven. I'm doing this. Now, if you're worried about cross contamination, do not get these rolls. They can cross. With the, the bottom. Mm. It's like a, a roll and a biscuit had a baby. It would be this. I would give this four out of five yeasties. Go ahead and just uh, destroy this biscuit like 2020 destroyed our dreams. And then steal a bit of this earth balance like 2020 stole our uh, our joy. So I got buttermilk for dinner and I'm trying to conserve my magic pills. There we go. I like the Christmas of the bread. It's got a nice toast to it. As for the flour. Ooh, yeah. Well, that is a warm inviting dinner roll. The crisp to draw you in. The center's nice and warm. On the rear balance, you really can't go wrong. Three and a half out of five plus. This is your seasonal market salad. It has arugula, spinach, roasted sweet potatoes, dried cranberries, tofu feta, toasted almonds, and grapes tossed in a sherry vinaigrette. It was the tofu feta that sold me. This sounds interesting to make a feta tofu. It looks so colorful. I don't even mind that there's dried fruit in it. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. I'm 
wouldn't mind eating the dried fruit in this salad. You have a lot of like different sweet and vinegary combinations combined with like the nuts and the tofu feta. This is actually a very well balanced salad. It's very dressed, which I don't mind. They might think it's a little overdressed, but yeah, I like the salad. I'd probably give it. Four to five spinach leaves. Let's see what we got here. It looks like a little bit of everything. Random made up statistic. If you put vegan cheese in something, the princess is 90% more likely to order it. Just a hint to all the virgin chefs out there. But I love the, what the, what the cranberries in here. We have a little, what is this? Sweet potato pieces in here. There is a lot of dressing. I think I'm like overflowing my fork because I won't get a bite of this. Let's just get to it. Mm. I would say appropriately dressed. I'm the right amount of savory, the sweet, and then the tangy. This is definitely a, one of the most healthy appetizers on here. And if you are feeling too hungry, you could probably eat this whole thing as a meal. I approve. Anything with a better spinach. Four to five bucks. Here we have the infamous Old Key West Olivia's Cock Critters with their little cute little basket. And then you have the key lime mustard and then our marmalade. And then for extra little touch, they have both a lemon. Get that little spritz on there. And a lime. I don't usually like a whole lot of lemon on my food, but when you give me a lemon and lime, all of a sudden I'm intrigued. Let's go ahead and get a little fork in there. Let's try this key lime mustard first, because I remember this being amazing. It's been so long. I've had this. I think our first trip ever to Libya's, I had this. I would probably bring it in the house. I know, I know, I'll bring it in tonight. No big deal. No, this one's like, I will bring it in tonight. It is a ball of awesome in your mouth. A key lime is just a hit, but it definitely gives it a unique flavor that you're probably not going to get anywhere else, even if you've had comforters before. That is impressive. And then the Ramalan. The Ramalan definitely gives it a more like Nola feel, but this is definitely like an authentic serving of awesome. I think it's time I added this to my bread and list. That's a five out of five clause. If you're feeling an appetizer, this is the one I'm gonna recommend to you. Now we have this beautiful plant-based curry. You think about the places I've had curry at Disney. Jiku. Um, the Wave, American Flavors, and here. I'm pretty sure that's it. Oh, and Sunshine Seasons, but that doesn't count, that's quick service. So we have this beautiful table service curry. We'll see where it, we'll see where it stacks up. The champion of the curry is GQ. This curry has pretty much all the same ingredients as the um, stir fry that we had here the last time, but even more things. Anything with tofu, I'm a sucker for. One, two, the fact that it has no alt meats, win. talk about that some people forget about that thing that that you call seasoning there's some seasoning in this and it's quite delicious oh it's not like an overpowering curry it's like a nice mild entry level curry for anybody that wants to try curry for the first time this is the curry for you is it better than jiku no but it is better than the wave 
I'm gonna give it four out of five curry leaves. Usually when I'm I have curry, whether it's at home or in a restaurant, there's usually like one or two ingredients in the mix that I pick out and eat all of them. And then I'll leave like other pieces vegetables or whatever in the curry. This curry is one where I'm not trying to pick out any vegetables. I just want to eat all of it. It's just that good. It just everything just combines so well. My favorite is probably the tofu and mame though. But all of it together is delicious. If you hadn't already noticed, Disney, we are ready for you to reopen Geek Cooper. I don't know who had to talk to who I can have ignore me, but we want Jiku back. In the meantime, let's see about this. Here we have some asparagus, sweet potato, some decent sized chunks of tofu, red pepper, edamame, some, like some arugula, broccolini. You got it all, it's kind of like a, a curry buffet of veggies right now. Try to get just a little bit of everything in here. Broccoli, there we go. Looks pretty on the fork. Like a garden salad with curry sauce. Mm. Okay. I can see this. It's like on a sweet sort of curry. Not a sort of like bitter taste. Um, if there's coconut milk in it, the seasonings by far would power that. There's your nice flavor. The vegetables have been the, the sauce on them. Definitely soak up all those seasonings so they don't just taste like plain vegetables in a sauce. This definitely doesn't taste like a box curry. I think the only thing that would make this better is probably like a side bowl of rice. But this is delicious. Feels healthy, tastes healthy, but also tastes amazing. I really can't go wrong with this. I'm surprised Olivia's not gonna have a park this time. Four out of five balls. Here we have the southernmost fried chicken biscuit. Uh, this is one of the things that Olivia is known for. We come here all the time. You guys have seen me eat the chicken and waffles, but I've never had the chicken dinner. So it just looks like an innocent looking chicken breast with some mashed potatoes on the bottom, a nice buttermilk biscuit, some green beans, and uh, this gravy smothered piece of fried chicken. It definitely looks like home cooking. Key is does it taste like home cooking. That chicken cut, it's nice and juicy inside, not undercooked. The gravy, I like the consistency, it just sticks right to the meat. Let's hope it sticks to the inside of my stomach. Mm. Moist, yes, I said moist. Moist chicken meat. Seasoned gravy, seasoned breading. This is officially, according to the power invested in me by the council, fried chicken. And it's got some flavor, I'm impressed. I think it's a nice size. The gravy is amazing. It's got like a little spice to it, but not too much. So there's no heat to it, but it's definitely got a burst of flavor on that the chicken. Everything goes well, so you're not feeling like you got too much grease or too much gravy. The breading isn't too thick. And it still maintains a small crunch. When you might not do it, I can do this. Four and five. Then we have the green beans. I don't really like green beans, but it is a veggie, so I gotta eat my veggies. Just like you do, kids. Like my green beans. They're good. They're not slimy, they're not rubbery, they're cooked. Cool. Really easy to bite into. I would prefer broccoli, but I'm just one of those weird kids. Now for this biscuit. And we're gonna nab some of the mashed potatoes with it. Oh yes. Yeah. Now that's a buttermilk biscuit. It's better than KFC. It's better than Popeyes. Not that they, either one of them sets the bar really, really high. There are no churches. But you guys can fight about the best chicken in the comments. For now, this is king. That biscuit, four and a half out of five plus. Green beans, two and a half out of five plus. 
my predictable self got a Mai Tai and it has this like floater on the top which is what I expected bear to drink to look like but did not. So I'm just gonna stir just so I don't kill us. Not too pineapple y, not too strong on the alcohol. This is a vibe. I would give this four out of five pineapples. Princess is her Mai Tais. I'm another king and I'm not a crown. So let's see how terrible this one is. Pretty strong. Just got a bit of a bite. Not a bad way. Not exactly my jam. Two and a half out of five plus. Bear loves his frozen drinks. He got a Key West freeze. It's clearly lime with something on the bottom. Ooh. Tastes like melon. This almost tastes like a New Orleans daiquiri. Two out of five ice cubes. I do like any excuse for a frozen drink and a warm straw. Don't ask me why, it's just my thing. Melon juice, pineapple juice, and coconut juice. It's almost like it's genetically engineered for the princess to hate it. It's an extra point just for that. Three and a half out of five plus. This is the beautiful tropical tart. We have our own little like create your own dessert. Because Chef Steven is that awesome knowing that this mango lime sorbet will kill the bear. But then we also have a toasted coconut crumble. That's what this is. And this is an avocado chocolate ganache. And then this is your tart, which I believe is actually the avocado chocolate. This is... I'm not sure what this is. Oh, this, this actually smells like mango. This is probably like a mango sauce. I'm not sure. I'll just do the tart. I'm gonna do the tart by itself. I'm gonna let Bear try it, and then I'm going to make another one with the mango stuff. That tart is like brownie right here. See how it compares to some of the other avocado desserts we've had on property. Ooh, that's really good. Oh. Oh, that reminds me of a really good brownie. Mmm. I hate to say it, but it almost tastes like my favorite plant-based skull brownie at Universal Studios. It's so good. And then I'm just going to take the tiniest little bite of the sorbet just to kind of pair it with it. That lime and mango together is really good. Okay. This is a win. This is a big win. And I cannot put the spoon back over here. I'll figure that out. I'm gonna give this five out of five avocados. Here we are again, letting the princess sucker me into another dessert. We have a chocolate tart and some coconut and some orangey stuff that I don't trust. Put that right there. Let's go ahead and uh, get a little bit here. It's got a weird consistency to it. The inside is soft. The outside is sort of gelatiny. A little bit of toasted coconut. The outside is almost dark chocolate blue. It's almost a bit too rich. Coconut is nice and subtle. 
with it being a toasted, but it pairs well with it. I've been looking into this writing, but for now I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5 pause. You know, Chef did say that all the mango things were here in this plate, so this can't possibly be mango. Mm. Ooh. All of it together elevates it even more. It kind of brings the richness to the tart. This almost tastes like, like if you were to bite into one of those expensive like chocolates that have the core in the middle that just kind of like oozes out. That's kind of what this is when you mix it with the ganache. The um, coconut doesn't exactly taste like coconut. It's just nice and crunchy. And then you have the sorbet to kind of finish it off with this like peppery sweetness. It's much better together than it is separated. But the real winner of this dish is the tart. Everything that you make, I've never realized that like avocado and chocolate go so well together. I think with avocado and chocolate is a win for me. I think it's all started with Toledo and their chocolate mousse. Well played, Olivia's. Well played. So Olivia's. It was amazing. I feel like every time we go to Olivia's, it steps this game up, especially since the reopen. You took the words right out of my mouth. I swear, from the, this is our fifth time coming here. Yes. That's and amazing. each time we've come, it has gotten better and better and better. Yeah, that chicken dish was memorable. I can see why everybody recommends that. Kind of sad I waited so long to try it, but it was definitely worth it. That dessert would make anybody, even a bear who doesn't like dessert, eat dessert. He ate I, more than I, I did. I did eat like half of it. And uh, honestly, I don't think you've ever had a bad drink at this resort. Um, except for the boxed sangria. Oh. Uh, uh, but you know, yeah. Box sangria. Outside of that, and the drinks have been incredible. And I mean, you can't go wrong with gurgling suitcase either. They have the most value drink on any bar on property. Well, we don't know when was the last time you guys came to Olivia's, so and what did you think? Let us know in the comments. If there's anywhere else around Old Key West or the Disney Resorts here you'd like to see us go, that's going to be the place to find us. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this, and... We have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. Well, we will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. You heard the girl. Don't forget to conk out. Get it? Conk out. We're, we're going to give our own dad jokes channel next. Watch. Rock out with your conk out.